Hi again, Mark here from Talking Bass. This week I'm going to break down a classic bass riff from a legendary band with a legendary bass player. It's the chorus riff from the song Ramble On by Led Zeppelin, played by the amazing John Paul Jones. As always, the lesson material and tracks are there over at Talking Bass, so just click the link in the info below to play along, and while you're there, check out the lesson map where you'll find over 450 free bass lessons on every topic imaginable, all systemized and organized for ease of navigation. Then, if that's not enough, subscribe to the free membership to gain access to the members area where you'll find a ton of free bass resources and downloads like the Scale Reference Manual and the 25 Bass Riff Challenge. So. Go check it out. Okay, so the chorus riff for Ramble On does change slightly through the song as John plays around with the opening bar. In this lesson, I'm going to show you the variations that he used in the opening chorus that should help with learning the rest of the song. So here are those riffs played with the track at 100 beats per minute. First let's work through the opening riff and then I'll add the other variations after. So we're in E major and we start with an open E. Then we have what you'll see here as a ghost note. Now, the ghost notes in here are actually pretty much played as open strings. So we have that open A string leading to the E there at the 7th fret of the A string and then the E at the 9th fret of the G string. But because it's played so quick, that little ghost note, you don't really hear it as an open string. It's just a ghost note. Now, um, you'll notice in the other variations, you know, when we're, we're up here, you know, We've got the open G string in there, we'll be using the open D string. If you listen to the isolated track of this, you can actually hear those little uh, open strings in there and it can sound a little bit out of tune, but it's only there for a fraction of a second. So, yes, you can play them as, you know, you know, as regular ghost notes, but I think John Paul Jones is actually playing them as open strings. So, that first part. Okay, then we have this E major arpeggio that sounds like this. Okay, so we've got open E string, G sharp at the fourth fret of the E string, B at the seventh fret of the uh, of the E string, and then up to the E at the seventh fret of the uh, of the A string. And these are all on offbeat sixteenth notes. So we've got so. Okay. So this leads us into that fast little line that we have in the second bar. So this is all based around an A at the seventh fret of the D string because the chord has now moved to A from the E. And uh, we played that A four times. So this is all 16th notes here, so. So one E and a. Then we have the E ninth fret of the G string and back to the A again um, at the seventh fret of the D string, which we play twice, so. Then we're up to the D, 7th fret of the G string. Then we have A, D, A, both 7th fret, so D string, G string, D string. And then we have a group of four at the end of A, played, twi uh, played twice, so that's 7th fret of the D string. So that makes three all together in terms of the A's, but I'm breaking it up into beats here. So, and then we have D to E, 7th fret to 9th fret G string, hammer on. So we play the D, hammer on to the E, okay? So, very slowly. One more time. So, that's the whole of that first line. So let's try that very slowly. So we have... One more time, so three, four. So that's the first riff. Now we can look at the variations. So for each of these lines, that fast part in the second bar is going to be the same. You know, that's going to be the same each time. It's only the first bar that changes. And the rhythm is pretty much the same. So. For the second line, we're going to be playing the E, 7th fret of the A string, and then we're going to be playing a ghost note, which is in a 
fret going to be the open D string to the B at the uh, ninth fret of the D string. And then we're back to the E at the seventh fret of the A string. So it's a little, little perfect fifth interval there on the E. So, okay. Then we just drop down for that uh, uh, for the um, E major triad again. So. So the rest of it's all the same. So it's only that first uh, couple of beats that are different. So, okay. So that's the uh, that's the second riff. So the whole thing. The third riff is pretty much the same again, but the start of this one sounds like this. So instead of hitting the B there, we're hitting the octave of that E. So we're hitting the ninth fret of the G string. And this time using the open G string as the ghost note leading up to it. So, so E seventh fret of the A string, open G string as the ghost note, and then hitting the E at the ninth fret of the G string. So then back to the E at the seventh fret of the A string. Then same as the first riff. So, we've got three riffs there. The fourth riff, because the chorus is made up of four riffs, the fourth riff is the same as the third. So, we've just got the opening riff, then a variation, and then a variation played twice. So, let's just work through all of those together slowly. So, we have... a few technical tips in the fretting hand on the E major arpeggio I tend to use the pinky for the B at the seventh fret of the E string so I'm playing open E string then using the first finger index finger then the pinky and the pinky however if that doesn't sit right with you you can always use the index finger on all those notes now as long as you get the notes it's okay then for that line on the top I just use the first and fourth fingers again. So this is the index and the pinky. So I've got the first finger there, the index finger taking that seventh fret and that uh, pinky taking the uh, ninth fret. Okay, now when we move to the D at the seventh fret of the G string, I'm actually using that index finger and using what I call joint barring. So because we don't really want to be barring like a chord. You know, you, you don't want to be holding it down across both of them. So, so I've got the finger curled, that first finger. So it's curled up until I move to the D. And then I straighten it up using that joint there. And I bring the hand back a little bit just to aid it. So that way you can just move between them. As a little exercise, you can just practice moving between the A and the D there. So just put that first finger there over the seventh fret of the, uh, you know, on the D and the G string, and just try moving between those two without, without getting a chord, you know. So you're shifting the pressure. So for the D string, you're playing pretty much with the kind of tip of the finger. And then when you play the G string, you're using more close to the joint so and you're just shifting the pressure between the two okay and that's really good uh, practice for that technique which you can use you know on any kind of bass line when you've got the same fret that you're moving to instead of shifting the whole finger each time you can just keep that finger there and then just use that little uh, joint barring in terms of the picking hand you can use whichever fingers you want for the majority of it. I generally start with the index finger there. And I'll probably use alternate picking when there's the ghost note in there. You know, so I'm index and then index, you know, middle. You know, just using alternate picking there. For the uh, ascending arpeggio, you can use one finger if you want. And then just use the second finger when you shift across onto the A string. Oh! You can use alternate picking in any way you want. It doesn't really matter with that bit. The only thing that you need to be aware of is that when you get to the fast bit, you're going to be uh, wanting to start with the uh, second finger, with the middle finger, because that'll make it easier 
when you're shifting across onto the G string there for that first part. Now when you get to the next G string with the, the D there, that held D, you're going to be catching that with the first finger, which might feel a little bit odd the first time you play it because, you know, moving across the strings and that way, <laughs> um, it always feels weird when you're shifting, you know, from the second finger to the first finger, but you just have to get used to it, so. But however you do it, when you start that line, you want to be starting with that middle finger. Just a little word on the gear here, I'm using a Fender Jazz bass with flat wounds, okay? So it's very obviously flat wounds. So, you know, if you listen to the isolated bass track, you can hear <laughs> it's flat wounds. So I've got flat wounds here and I'm pretty much soloing the, uh, the neck pickup to get that big fat sound. Okay, so uh, I'm also picking a little bit closer to the neck here. I'm not picking back here because that's going to give us more of that middly kind of honky tone. So I'm going for the rounder kind of sound back uh, down here. So I'm pretty much playing over the neck pickup. Okay. Okay, so when it comes to practicing this riff, don't rush to get it up to speed. Just get those notes down at a slower tempo as you need. Don't worry about clicks or tracks to begin with. Then, once you have it under your fingers, you can start building up the tempo. Now, I've included tracks at three different tempos, 80, 90, and 100 beats per minute, okay? So they're all over at Talking Bass, so if you wanna practice to those tracks, just click the link in the info below. Okay, so let's try those four riffs played along to the track at the slowest tempo of 80 beats per minute. Let's turn up the speed a bit by moving to 90 beats per minute. Finally, let's try full speed, 100 beats per minute. So that's Ramble On. Remember to like, comment, subscribe, and hit the notification bell for reminders of lessons every Friday. Also, be sure to check out the lesson material over at Talking Bass by clicking the link in the info below. And while you're there, you can check out the lesson map containing over 450 free bass lessons, as well as the free membership, where you'll find a ton of free practice resources and downloads. Okay? I'll see you next week.